September 17th and 18th, the ADCC World Championships will descend upon Las Vegas, Nevada for the biggest submission grappling spectacle the world has ever seen. Center stage will be one of the most exciting, talent-rich divisions at the entire historic tournament. 66 kilograms, 145 pounds. This year, 16 gold medal hopefuls from every corner of the globe will all be vying for their chance at ADCC glory. One of the few divisions without a returning champion, this year, ADCC will crown a new king of the featherweights. This year, a new legacy will be born. A new legend will emerge. A new champion will rise to the top. From all over the world, these 16 submission grapplers have trained and sacrificed all year for one reason, to be ADCC champion. But only one will walk away with gold and their lives changed forever. This is an unparalleled look into the lives and mindsets of the individuals marching towards battle. See how they train, prepare, and approach this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is the most exciting submission grappling competition in the world. Welcome to the ADCC Path to Glory. 66 kilograms, a new era starts now. History books are littered with legends and jiu-jitsu pioneers from the featherweight division. Historically dominated by the country of Brazil, Hoyler Gracie, Leo Vieira, Rafa Mendes, Combrinha, and Tanquinho have all cemented their legacies here on these ADCC mats. But now, for the first time since 1999, a new returning champion isn't present to defend his belt which means the door is open for someone new. Perhaps Cole Abate, the ADCC East Coast Trials winner, has what it takes to assume the mantle. My name is Cole Abate. I'm 17 years old and I'll be competing at ADCC this year in the 66 kilogram division. I'm training with the Mendez brothers right now. The goal is to, is to go in and dominate. Welcome to the grass. Little garage gym. We got our mats over here. Since the age of four, Cole has been dreaming of following in the footsteps of his coach, Hoffa Mendez. Now at 18 years old, he has a shot to add his name to a short list of grappling legends who have won this story division. I think the ADCC this year is really exciting. Uh, one, because I'm the youngest. Uh, I'm the youngest uh, and I have the chance to, to, to make history. Russell Hoffa has the, ref the record right now at 19. We, we look at it a little bit different. It's not me breaking his record, it's more setting a new record for the team. Having him will, will give me a, a lot better chance at, at having a good run in the event and uh, hopefully setting the record as being the youngest at 17. Being in a division full of killers and, and guys that have all like solidified their spot and either they got an invite or they, they worked hard and, and won, the, won the trials. So I have a lot of respect for the people in the division. I know it's gonna to be tough. Dolomer hooked us up, um, helped us out a lot during quarantine. Um, we kept going, nothing ever stopped. All that extra work and a lot of the new stuff you were seeing him do was like happening right here. Uh, we've probably watched every 66 kg ADCC uh, match in history, you know, sitting on these matches and, and watching it on that TV. Yeah, he's still back there. We're here at, uh, at iPhone Cafe, uh, Chef's Place. So, about to get a good lunch in, and then uh, we'll be back at AOJ pretty soon. If I could be every day, I would. But, uh, when I'm when I'm not uh, when I'm not on diet, I try to come in a lot. From an early age, I, I I always knew that the that doing ADCC is what I wanted to do. The first one that I actually got to go see in person was uh, was 2019. But I remember like watching those fights and like picturing myself in that 66 division. 
watching the the strategies like be be put into play and 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 see it there live it was really cool to see i was already planning to do the trials then going into the to the east coast trials uh, i knew it would be a it would really be a really tough bracket between every fight we would go uh, we would go back and look at the next opponent and try and study and see what uh, what holes uh, were in that opponent's game and try to expose them a lot of experience got taken away from the from that finals match um, Keith Corian, a very tough, very tough guy. He just won the trials right now in, at West Coast and took out a bunch of big names there. And uh, felt good that the strategy that me and my professor had made was able to work, uh, work effectively. And I was able to win by points and not get, not get scored on, but uh, was able to do the trials and get the victory there. And now I'm now I've solidified my spot in the event. The the vision this year uh, at 66 is it's very open. Uh, of course, the champion, uh, Tunquino, I think is retired, so he won't, won't be competing in, in the division as well. The only person from last ADCC that, that actually places Kennedy. So it leaves it very open for our new champion. Because Hoffa has won um, multiple times, he's won twice now in, in the 66 kilogram division, he has a very good perspective and a good insight on what the people are going to feel like, the level um, that they're going to be, and also what positions and what style and approaches that he he used will work more more effectively for me. I have a huge chance to, uh, to surprise a lot of people. I'm good at un under pressure and, uh, and good at performing uh, when I'm the underdog. So I think, uh, I think it'll be a, a good chance for me to, uh, to make a name for myself in, in that division. If I can get finishes in every fight, then that would be the, the main goal. And uh, I want to I wanna win in fashion, not just, not just win. I want to I wanna do it and showcase good jiu-jitsu along the way. Everything I've been doing, everything I've been competing and training for has been for this. So I know that this will be a huge step forward. And if I can win this, it'll be, uh, it'll be huge for my career and I'll be able to make history. Halfway across the world, a legion of Brazilian grapplers are duking it out for their spot at the prestigious competition. Hello, my name is Diego Batista. I'm here in Sao Paulo. We're gonna walk around. Let's do it. Diego Pato is one of Brazil's most accomplished submission artists. When I moved to Sao Paulo, I was like 15 years old. I, I stopped the school like early. Like my on the, I don't know in, in English how to say, but like, it's like in Brazil, like a- You dropped out of school? Yeah, just three years. I did just three years. And then, yeah. My, my mom got angry, and my dad as well. <laughs> I want to, to live like from, from, for jiu-jitsu, from jiu-jitsu, and yeah, that's it. And I come here. From Manaus, it's like 100% different. And I come here, it's like a little bit different, like the field month, but after, I'm like an expert. <laughs> What's a normal day like for you here in Sao Paulo? What do you do? Just training. <laughs> I'm super excited to, to compete the ADCC for the first time. The rules is a, di a really different, but I feel like confidence. I'm training a lot for that. I feel really good. I'm ready and yeah, that's it. It's a normal tournament. It's a, only one. I go hard for, with everyone, doesn't matter. I think the, the big names on the brackets are Fabrice Sunde, Diogo Hayes, yeah, I'm waiting for Kennedy on the official ADCC. No, no, no. I think it's gonna be mine. And a spectacular win here could be life changing. You win a from Brazil, Diego Bautista! Deep in the Amazon jungle, lies a legendary city that has produced more jiu-jitsu champions than any other. Manaus, Brazil has been a factory for producing world-class jiu-jitsu for decades. And this year, Fabricio Andre has earned his spot to represent his country on the biggest stage in grappling. Okay, are you ready? No. Pronto? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Fabricio Andre. I'm training in Manaus, Melke Galvão BJJ School. I'm fighting 16-6 uh, kilos uh, ADCC. 
when I fight the, I think it's my my best experience is in Sao Paulo. You had a lot of submissions in Sao Paulo. You like to win by submission? Yes, I, I think it's my my focus uh, is just submission. My favorite game is just submission. We have a new contender for the most exciting nogi grappler in the world. Fabricio Andre stormed through the trials here in Sao Paulo. I'm very fast. I like to finish and go to the finishing in the back. Why do you think Manal is the best jiu-jitsu in the world? We training together, we eat together, so a teamwork is a, a secret, I think. Look, it's a nice grip. Winner ADCC, it's my dream. I think I'm, I'm complete my objective. I think it's my, my game. It's good for finishing everyone. Just uh, one step for my, my victory. So let's go. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to say some names of people in your division. Okay. And then you just tell me, very casual, what you think about that person, what you would think about a fight with them, okay? Okay. So we start off with your teammate, Diogo Hayes. It's easy. <laughs> Hello guys, my name is Jugo Reyes. People call me now Baby Shark. I live in the Amazon. They call him the Baby Shark, a feared submission artist on the mats. Diogo Hayes is another example of Manaus jiu-jitsu excellence. In Manaus, you don't have it be good beach, you don't have a lot of fun things to do. So what you do is just train it. Train it, rest, train it, rest, train it, rest. That's why people they are good here. You like your look? Yeah, I like. I like when I do, not when I think. <laughs> I like to ana analyze my fights. I like to use a lot of strategy. I go hard, but I think I like to play the game, you know? Were you very happy when you qualified for ADCC? Yeah, yeah, because I didn't expect we won trials. I just went there and see what, and let's see what's going to happen. And then I won trials. I, Get surprised, no? I got surprised. What? I won't try. In Brazil, try is very important because if you won't try, it's like a, you won more Brazilian nationals, let's say. Because try is very hard. Very, very, very hard. I train so hard for this moment. All my life I train for this moment, you know, to achieve my goals. I'm really happy because I'm in the DCC now. I get my sports working hard and a lot of things will come. I think it's a privilege to be there because only the best is there. Six, 16 guys in each division. The feeling will be, will be good, the vibe will be good, I will be happy. Do a big step in my life. I have to keep working hard, keep doing what I do, keep improving, you know. I don't want a title, I want a legacy. Another new face in the featherweight division, but no stranger to the ADCC mats. Maybe the world's most exciting grappler is a fan favorite, Gary Tonin. All right, we're here at Roca. I'm in a sweatsuit in 100 degree heat and I'm about to go run before training at 8 a.m. More focused than ever, the 2019 bronze medalist at 77 kilograms is dropping down in weight and taking on the new generation of foes. Gary is looking to add an elusive ADCC gold medal to his trophy case. I'm Gary Tonin, your mom's favorite grappler. This year, dropping down to 66 kilograms. I've always kind of believed that I could do fairly well at 145 or 66 kilograms, and we'll see what happens uh, you know, this coming year, but I'm excited to give it a shot. I do look at it as a, a little bit more opportunity, maybe, uh, in the 66 kilogram division, but we'll see, man. I mean, all those guys are super tough. The only reason I may say that is just they're not, maybe not as established. In terms of me going up against some of the younger athletes that are gonna be in the 145 pound division in ADCC, I think what you'll see is just me having a very complete game. Yeah, I think that my experience will be the biggest edge that I have in, the, in this division. I think it's, it definitely gives you some an edge to, to be around ADCC and have competed in it a long time and watch other athletes and all these sorts of things. Like, 
I don't think some of these guys have that, that type of experience. So I think that's gonna be probably my biggest leg up on the competition more than anything else. I think that there's a lot of dangerous guys out there. A lot of them are tough in their own ways, but I think I'm the most seasoned competitor that there is. And from tactics to submission game, to wrestling, to you know positional exchange, whatever it is, uh, I've kind of had the best perspective that you could possibly have on what to bring to an ADCC competition. So I think, it, I think that's gonna be the hardest challenge that they're gonna face. A little art. I haven't finished hanging up all my stuff. I really haven't finished moving in and stuff yet. Always leave your Christmas tree set up here around? Uh, no, we just never put it away. There's kind of a point of uh, no return, right? It's like, I mean, if you have your Christmas tree out for six months, what's another six months? You know? Got some protein waffles getting delivered. Gotta get those going this morning for breakfast, so. The uh, garage is gonna be a different story. Okay. It's not nearly as uh, <laughs> as clean as the house is, that's for damn sure. Yep. One day I'll get this all, all together, but today, today is not the day. <laughs> Oh, man. I spent a really long time on jiu-jitsu. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for like 16 years now, and uh, I've won a lot of things. I've made a, a name for myself. You know, I'm very, I'm very successful. I'll go down as one of the best ever in the sport. But you know, to not have the, the box checked off as like ADCC champion definitely feels like there's a little bit of unfinished business. a lot to win ADCC. Uh, I think that's kind of what's looked at as the pinnacle of the sport. It's a big thing for me. It's a big thing for any grappler. It would be huge for me to finally be able to say Gary Tona is an ADCC champion. In April of 2022, ADCC embarked on the largest ever trial qualifier event. The North American Trials drew competitors from all over the nation, and with over 150 competitors at 66 kilograms, the deck was stacked against Keith Krikorian. As soon as I got here at 3 a.m., I just went straight to the, to the sauna and cut for like three hours, bro. Man, it's gonna be really, really tough, but uh, I'm all for it, bro. I'm like here for the tough matches, and man, I just wanna win this so bad, dude. I'll fight, I'll fight really hard. I think I can do it, man. Who knows? That's Elias Anderson. That's Combat Jiu-Jitsu Champion at 135 against Combat Jiu-Jitsu Champion at 145. Holy shit. Super fight going on right here. I act like I didn't want to play legs and then play legs, you know? I think I'm one of the best leg archers in the world. I'm here to, to fight like hell. I think I'm gonna have the winner of Damien and Andrew Tackett. Man, nice. I'm pumped for either of those, dude. I've uh, kind of been watching Andrew for so long, and I think people have always said they want to see me go against him. And then Damien, I've had the three matches with, and uh, he's always tough, and he's just uh, truly elite. So either of those guys would be awesome to go against. Every single match I was very proud of. I did everything that I that I kind of said going in that I was gonna do is what I did. I wanted to work legs on certain guys, like wait till points and, and pass on certain guys, you know, sweep certain guys uh, come point time. Uh, you know, the finals went exactly as I planned, you know, snatch single, uh, pull into a leg, you know. Toughest trials to ever happen, bro, and I'm so like 
big on just mental toughness and like will and, and, and so many things that I, I, I kind of define my game as. Man, just all these tough dudes, like this is the hardest possible route I could have mapped out for myself. I'm gonna make my mark, bro. I'm gonna make my mark, and I'm, I'm never doing this. I'm, not, I'm never doing these trials again, bro. I'm hoping that I prove that I'm elite, and uh, man, I'm just I'm ready to go. Keith Gregorian is your 2022 ADCC West Coast Trials champion. After seven matches, Keith punched his ticket to the Big Show, and will have an opportunity of a lifetime to compete for ADCC glory. They say freaks don't sleep, and for the 10th planet ringleader who eats, sleeps, and breathes jujitsu, it's now or never for Gio Martinez to realize his ADCC dreams. I think my division's gonna be super hype, you know, a bunch of up and coming killers, you know, they're some of the best in the world right now. To be able to be at the biggest tournament in the world that a lot of people don't get a chance to compete in, that's an honor, you know, people gotta appreciate Jiu-Jitsu. These are some of the hardest working athletes in the world and very talented, beautiful art. I feel like Jiu-Jitsu events, we've been waiting for something like this. Put Jiu-Jitsu on a whole different level. Because I competed with a lot of those guys, and I've been around and I competed at ADCC several times. I feel confident it'll be a big event for me, and I want to go in there and be ready more, more than ever. I understand the rule set very well, and I understand my game, and I understand what game fits the best in that rule set. So I'm ready to go in there and just be myself and do what I do. People know when I go in there, I, I put on good matches, you know, I fight and I go for it. I don't know why, but ADCC just brings the best out of me. The last ADCC, I felt like I didn't get to perform the way I wanted to perform. I just had an off day. I just didn't do what I was supposed to do. This time I'm not gonna let it go to the ref decisions. I wanna make sure I leave it on the mat so I don't have any regrets. I'm not really gonna have too many opportunities to be able to get this title and capture this title. So I don't wanna have that question like what if or you know I should have done this or that. I'm gonna really go in and, and give it all I got. It's gonna it's gonna be uh, you know, a hard day, but it's gonna be a good day for sure. Ready, one, two, three. Nice. Thank you, work, everybody! For these 16 hopefuls, becoming ADCC champion means everything. On some occasions, these men have worked their entire lives for this opportunity, and on September 17th, one of them has a chance to shock the world and etch their name in history books forever. Anything can happen, and all 16 competitors have a shot to claim the throne. Returning silver medalists, veterans, prodigies. Who has the mental fortitude, technique, and willpower to overcome it all. When the lights come down in Las Vegas, years of buildup, months of hard work, decades of history will collide. And when the dust settles, someone will be crowned champion. Who will it be? Find out right here on flowgrappling.com.